the purposes of this Guy and Gimbal Masterclass, we're going to look at the first three principles which we use to bring something inanimate to life. And those three principles are breath, focus and weight. So we're going to look at the three principles um, and we're going to start by looking at breath. So to breathe, you're going to push down into the sort of ribs of the puppet. So I'm pushing down from the neck and Finn's resisting me, so we're sort of compressing the ribs of the puppet between us. Um, it's quite important if you're on the uh, head of the puppet to vocalise the breath of your puppet for your audience. And so that lets the audience know that the puppet is alive. They can see, they can see the breath, they can hear the breath, so they can tell it's alive. But breath can also tell us about the emotion of the puppet. So by changing the rhythm, we might think that the puppet is relaxed or distressed alarmed, so you can do all sorts of storytelling with the breath of the puppet. Next up uh, is focus, where the puppet's looking, what the puppet's interested in. <laughs> and actually you can hold uh, the puppet's gaze on one thing for as long as you like, because basically while it's looking at that thing, it's interested in it, and it might have different levels of interest. But when its focus changes, then it's thinking about something else. The last principle we're going to look at is we're going to look at weight in the puppet. So this is in every sort of movement of the puppet, possibly most evident in walking. We want to see weight go through those feet as the legs touch the floor so that it feels like the puppet has muscle and is opposing gravity. The other way we might show it is by jumping. So if the puppet does a little jump, One more time. So we're really trying to show that there's weight in the body of the puppet. The positions that the puppeteers take to operate the puppet is that they have one person on the head and a hand, another person on the body and the other hand, and then a third person operating both feet. So the person operating the head of the puppet vocalises the breath of the puppet for the audience to hear, uh, but breath is also a really key way of unifying all three puppeteers in their actions, so much so that if there's a tiny break in the rhythm or a shift in the type of breathing, uh, it can be a suggestion to the other puppeteers of an action that might happen. So weight for a puppet is pretty crucial, because very often puppets don't weigh the same as the thing they're supposed to emulate. If you make a human puppet, it doesn't weigh the same as a real human. So it's about the puppeteers giving it the same physics that we have, the same laws of gravity. You've got to keep your eyes on your puppet at all times because as soon as you look out, then suddenly there's two beings here. There's two people vying for attention. But while my focus is with the puppet, the puppet gets all the focus and I start to disappear. Okay, so now we're going to do an exercise where you guys take your puppet and what we're going to ask you to do is uh, copy something that you know in life. So in groups of three or four, you're going to think of something that one of you in your group knows really well. So it might be uh, ballet, or it might be swimming, or it might be golf, or it might be digging a hole in a garden. But it's something you've actually done that's really specific, and then you're going to take all of that detail and try and put it into your puppet. Cool. Off you go. Okay, get cracking. So in the groups of three, when one participant is demonstrating the physical exercise, the other two puppeteers are watching and observing and looking for evidence of the three principles of breath, of focus and of weight. Uh, so they can apply those to the puppet to make the gesture of the puppet even more realistic. OK, let's see your piece. Great, cool, very nice guys, really good, brilliant, brilliant. Um, fab, okay, so uh, what did we see? What was it? Diving. Diving, very clear, yes, brilliant. Um, which bits of it were particularly effective? Which bits of it were clear? 
I like that we knew how they felt about the dive, like when they got a bit jittery at the yeah. beginning when they stepped in. Brilliant. Yeah, and if we think about our, the principles, the three principles we've been talking about, do those help us to understand why uh, the character felt jittery or nervous? Yeah, the breath. Yeah, the, brilliant. The breath was really helping us there. Yes, other things that we liked or that read well? The weight and gravity as well when they pushed off to get into the dive. Yeah, there was a really nice prep, wasn't there, before the push into the jump into the water. Yes, cool. Other things? The focus of where, where they were diving to and where they're, where they're going to. Yeah, it was really clear look, looking into the water and then coming back and then making the decision, and that was really helped by the eye line and the focus. Yeah, brilliant. Anything we think we could have helped them with in terms of the principles particularly? I think it would have been nice to see like, a difference in... like I, was some, I wasn't sure when exactly they hit the water, maybe some kind of change in speed. That's a really nice, nice observation, and that might be helped by thinking about weight or the weight of the body. So actually if there was quite a lot of acceleration as those muscles push them into the air, and then when they hit the body, because they're travelling through a different substance, this weight would seem to change, so they might slow down a little yeah. bit. Should we just try that, guys? Should we yeah. just try... So going from your dive... <sighs> yeah, lovely. Really nice. You can see the change. Fantastic, guys. Really well done. Nice one. I didn't realise there was such a huge variety of different types of puppets and different styles of puppetry. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about finger puppets and marionettes as, that's puppetry, that's all there is. And then I've been introduced to so many more things. Working as a team and making something come alive like that, I thought it was just, I just thought it was incredible, you know. When you start putting breath and focus and weight, it's exciting to see it come alive and sometimes you even forget that there are people there and it's just really cool.